Now, one of the things I'm going to ask about, I know you get tons of questions about current projects and things like that, sure. but I'm kind of curious, your beginning was with Marvel, uh, yes. and but how did that really happen? Were you going to cons like this way back when and saying, here's some things I have ideas with or yeah. some of the work? Well, it was, I used to show, I, I, when I started, I was doing artwork, so I used to go to the cons and go up the pros at the tables and show my portfolio and get some advice. And uh, and then it wasn't until um, I didn't get into comics as far as working professionally until I was 30. And uh, I had a buddy of mine from high school, Mark Texera, who was, uh, at the time he was drawing uh, Ghost Rider and Punisher, and he needed help. So I said, I'll help you if you're going to work up at Marvel. So it was my in to get up there every day. So I used to go up to Marvel, work for Mark, bother the editors for work and eventually that's how I got in eventually if you bother people politely enough for long enough they give in and give you some work and that's what I did it's persistence isn't it the persistence <laughs> has to be backed by talent but persistence is definitely the first part of it um, it's persistence in everything because honestly you know uh, most people give up things quickly so uh, and every time they give up it's sort of like some another person out of the way so you can get to where you have to go well, you kind so, of have to have the passion, the drive. Yeah, the passion, the drive, the, um, you have to feel like, um, the confidence, I think, mm. was, was it. Um, I, I never thought I was great, but I had the confidence enough that I know if I had the opportunity, I would step up to the plate and do a good job. Oh, yeah. okay. Now, when, are you, when you write, yeah. Like, what is your world like when you write? Are you just, are you using music? Are you, are you using, are other, or are you just totally in your own little cave and you just shut everything out? Well, I, I, uh, I you know, so I'll, I'll look at, like, this week I have um, a deadline for uh, Harley 20, Harley Quinn 20, 28. I know what I want to do in the book, but I have to really work it out. So I work it out in my head. So it's when I'm driving, when I'm having lunch with Amanda, we'll talk about some ideas. Um, the writing part happens 24 hours a day. Uh, the actual typing Mm. part is the easy part because usually by then I have it in my head and I just sit down and I type out the book that's the short and easy part um, the harder part is getting it and I see it like a, like a movie or how you would a movie or something really happening so it, it, it registers in my brain I see it like a film wow. and, and then I, I know where I want to go once I have that then I get in and sit down and start writing and, uh, and then I go from there do you, when, do you ever sketch out some of the work to give I, to the I, I do artist. Not, if I want to reference something, or if I want to create a character that doesn't exist, I'll uh, I'll um, actually just do a quick sketch and say, look, sort of like this, but do your own thing. You know, I never really tell people what to do. Um, and again, you know, being an artist helps with the writing because I see what I want in each panel, so my descriptions are pretty pretty straight on. I'll, I'll even put. Um, cues for camera angles and stuff like that so so you're doing a detailed script yeah i do a full script so um description of the panel location time of day lighting at times and then i do dialogue um i do that because when you see the comic book i don't want the face of the character to say it be something different than what they're saying so it is a bit of a control thing but at the same time the books come out better because they reflect the actual dialogue Ooh. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. I would think, and I know I've talked to artists before, they say, well, I like a loose script or I like a tight script. Me, I'd love the tight script because yeah. I know what's going on here. Well, a loose script is trouble because uh, somebody can draw the, uh, the uh, character like this <laughs> and then the character is laughing or something. Then you have to change it. And I don't believe in making the artist work that hard. I, I want to make it easy for them. Um, and if it's stuff they haven't seen before, I reference or places, I send reference links on my scripts or photos on my scripts. So I just, again, being on the other side where I had to draw scripts, I understand what I want, so that's how I, that's how I do it. I even put time of day in uh, my color notes on my scripts are actually in color. So the colorist can just go through and go, okay, you know, there's my notes. Nice. Yeah. Can Jimmy watch TV and movies of, of, well, even of, product you know that you've worked on or yeah. of comic books you've worked on or can and even other stuff do you look at it can you actually watch it or are you dissecting and say why did he write it this way or why did they do it uh, that way no I, I try to uh, check my brain out um, it isn't until after I see it then I go why did they do that or you know that was not very well written or that dialogue for that actor was not made right you know uh, again uh, I've written for TV and I've written screenplays and uh 
the best thing you can do, especially when you work on a TV show, is to, is to sit there and have the actors read through it because sometimes your dialogue doesn't sound right coming out of them, so you can tweak the dialogue live. Wow. and fix it. On Painkiller Jane, I kind of did that here and there. Here's Amanda. Uh, this is your table, Bill. Okay. <laughs> Making room for Amanda. Yeah, always. Yes. Always. Got to do that. Can you can you watch, uh, like, the Suicide Squad movie that's going to come out? Can you see Harley? or is it Because you work with no, Harley. I, love, I, love, I can't wait for that. I mean, it looks... Trail looks great. She looks great. Um, I have no idea what the movie's about, and I kind of like it that way. I'll go in oh, wow. when, they, when they, you know, invite us to see it. I'll go in with a clean slate. I don't expect it to be exactly any one version of Harley, you know, because. Um, but it's a lot of our Harley in the in the trailer, which I was very happy about. Um, she's got a different costume, which I love, um, and she's a character that you know everybody's going to put their own take on it. So yes. she's, that's why I think she's so popular too, because uh, a lot of people that cosplay it put their own spin on it, and I think it's one of the few characters you can do that with. And question for the old schoolers. Yeah. Major influence, would you say, comic book wise, for you? Comic book wise, um, when I grew up, definitely uh, uh, guys like Frank Frazetta, Al Williamson. Um, I look at like uh, Stranko, Jim Stranko, uh, John Buscema. Um, God, that's so much. Of course, Kirby, and you know, I, I loved all the uh, different styles. So the art, that's what. If it looked different, I liked it. Uh, Craig Russell, uh, P. Craig Russell, Bernie Wrightson, uh, Kaluta. Oh. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm looking at Jack Davis, uh, guy, guys that made their own style. Not guy, you know, there's a lot of people that look like, try to be those guys, but those guys were the originals. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you get back to uh, okay. what's going on here, because, right. you know, it's get, starting to get packed, and we're right. fortunate he did this right at the beginning of the show for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. And I it's, deeply appreciate that. Uh, my, my yeah. pleasure, Riley. And, and yeah. you, by the way, do podcasts of your own, right? I used to do them. Right. I don't have any time anymore. I used to well, do it weekly with a buddy of mine, Mike, in Canada, and... Uh, it was just me rambling with Mike. It was actually, I don't even know. It, it, it was popular, but it was me giving my opinion of things. And uh, it just became that he had a kid. And once you have a kid, your whole life gets thrown up, you know. So I said, no, oh, we, can, we can end it now. It's okay. We did a bunch of them, and it was fun. So now I'm just a guest on other people's, which is, which is fun as well. It's easier. I'm a guest here. <laughs> I'm a guest, like I'm a guest, yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. And right. we'll put a link to your, because I know you have a, you know, a whole group of artists and creators together. Yep, yep. Paper and, films, yeah, yep. paperfilms.com, yeah. And we, we'll have paperfilms.com cool. right Sounds on our great. website. Sounds and great. I encourage checking him out wherever he'll appear. You, you want to. This is one of the nicest individuals in the creative field we've met. I'm a horrible bastard. Oh, it's all right. Can we quote that? Sure. It's horrible. We'll just isolate that. Amanda's history's greatest monster, and I'm a horrible bastard. So, uh, but, but that's not really true. We're okay. nice to everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. All right, buddy. All right.